cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hark, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves on this second Sunday of Advent to cel celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to and you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, May no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the miter that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and the, that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord, Lord has done, done great things for us. We are, we are filled, filled with joy. joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord, the Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with, with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The, the Lord, Lord has, has done great, great things, things for us. us. We, we are, are filled, filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The, the Lord, Lord has, has done, done great, great things, things for us. We, we are, are filled with joy. with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel for the first day until now. I am confident of this that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, 
that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight, and the rough way is made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. With the beginning of Advent, we begin a new liturgical year, and that means reading from a different gospel on Sundays than we did um, before Advent began. This coming year, we will be reading from the Gospel of Luke, which has unique qualities to it. For example, Luke has the parable of the prodigal son and the Good Samaritan, and he has the canticles of Zechariah and Mary, which we use during morning and evening prayer in the Liturgy of the Hours, and the canticle of Simeon that we, that we use during night prayer. These are unique features to Luke that you can't find in the other Gospels. And another notable feature of St. Luke's Gospel is his strong emphasis on the historicity of Christ and the events surrounding him. He goes to great length to demonstrate the historicity of Jesus. For example, the opening words of the gospel follow a conventional format that was used uh, to preface historical accounts in the ancient Hellenistic world. He situates his account within world history, in the days of Herod, king of Judea, etc. And the birth of Jesus is also situated that way. He cites that Caesar Augustus was reigning, and Quirinius was governor of Syria, etc. And John the Baptist's ministry in today's gospel is situated similarly. We hear in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip Tetrarch of Iturea, and Lysanias Tetrarch of, of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. St. Luke is going to a great deal of trouble to make a crucial point that our faith hinges on, that Jesus Christ was a real historical figure. He did really enter into human history, meaning, uh, in a larger sense, that God has intervened in human history to reverse its course and to set it in a new direction. Maybe another way of saying this is Christianity is not mythological storytelling, simply intended to impart, impart important lessons 
like Aesop's fables or the um, annals of in adventures of Hercules. No, his, uh, our faith, Christianity, is about a real person and what he did to save us from sin and death. And St. Luke is testifying to this fact, which the church has always proclaimed. Jesus Christ is a real human figure in human history who came and lived among us and accomplished our salvation. There's really good historical testimony to this fact that Jesus was a real historical figure. And St. Luke is pointing that out and relating to us um, what eyewitnesses told him in, in his account of the gospel and the early life of the church. Okay, what's my point here? My point is that our Catholic faith or religion is not about wise lessons to live by, but about an encounter with Jesus Christ, the one who entered history to change its course from sin leading to death to salvation leading to new and the fullness of life for those who come to accept him. Advent proclaims Jesus Christ's first and second comings, his birth in Bethlehem and his return at the end of time. And it's meant to wake us up, to shake us from our worldly, distracted sleepiness so that we realize who Jesus is once again and what a relationship with him opens up for us. A whole different life, freedom from the bondage of sin, true happiness, and a life that won't just make us content here, but will last forever. And in fact, it will be even better in the life to come. Today's gospel passage introduces to us John the Baptist and his call to prepare the way of the Lord to make straight his paths. Um, I don't know if you've had this experience in a busy parking lot um, when somebody, you know, in the parking lot's all along a two-way street, and somebody insists on taking a left across traffic when you're trying to um, get home, and the best place would be either to take a right and maybe loop around, or actually to go to the other end of the parking lot where you can get onto a side street and then turn left at a light. You know, um, there was a grocery store parking like that in Duluth where I was for 11 years before before I became bishop out here. And there was always some person trying to do that, take a left onto Arrowhead Road when uh, all the traffic was streaming right, you know, and um, just at the other end of the parking lot was a nice on-ramp to a side street where they could go and then turn at the light. And of course, when you insist on doing something like that, you can back up a lot of traffic in a busy parking lot. And sure enough, that would happen over and over again. It's a little bit like that down in Bacon Park, you know, in front of Family Fair when people try to get onto Mountain View Road instead of simply going off onto Canyon Lake Drive and then turning at the light. Why am I talking about parking lots <laughs> the second Sunday of Advent? Well, my point is, other than perhaps I need to learn more patience, is that we're like that car trying to take a left-hand turn that's backing up traffic. We're headed really in the wrong direction often not paying attention to a better way as we wander around spiritually and then we cause others to be delayed and backed up as well. We cause a spiritual mess for ourselves and those around us, insisting that we chart our own course. Advent calls us to wake up, to reassess our situation and to make some changes. I have a suggestion that I think all of us um, can implement in our lives. It's not complicated at all. A simple method for our Advent journey. Let us center our attention on Jesus Christ and ask him specifically to take charge of our lives and to set us in a new direction. Repenting of our sins, let the Lord take the lead and set the course. I know that's so countercultural in so many ways today, but it is the way to true happiness, to learn the way. In fact, Christianity was called the way in the ancient world. Learn the way of following Jesus Christ. Turn away from our own selfish ideas and our limited perspective and allow the Lord of glory, who entered human history, to change its course, to do that in our lives as well. And then we'll be ready for Christmas and ready for him when he returns at the end of time, fully open to the gift 
of salvation and new and everlasting life. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death on the third and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God always hears our prayers, let us turn to him in our need. For the church, that we may make ready a way for the Lord in our time and make a straight path for God in our hearts, our families, and our workplaces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, that our love for others may grow in depth and sincerity, and that God's work in us may bring us ever closer to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For the needs of the faithful in the diocese, especially for the needs and concerns shared on the prayer cards during the annual diocesan appeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For those who are ill, that God will heal the sick, strengthen their caregivers, and inspire all who are seeking cures for disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For those who have died, especially Richard Gowan, that God will bring them into the fullness of life in his presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. And for all of your intentions, those of you who are watching this Mass, from home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead, and lead us not us into temptation, temptation, but deliver, deliver us from, us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, room, but only say the word and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Jerusalem, arise and stand upon the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our strength and consolation hope of all the earth a heart dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart born thy people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to By thine own eternal